Welcome back to Midpoint, everybody. We'll also welcome back a board member of the Death with Dignity Political Action Fund. Dr. David Mayo joins us. Doctor, let's pick up where we left off a few moments ago where you talked about the fact that you are a doctor. There is a physician involved in all of this as well. I'm sure you've heard this argument before, but I do have to bring it again to the fore here. There are many people who say you are a physician. Your job is to protect life, protect the sanctity of life, and commit to support and help people remain alive, if you will. How then, they will ask, can a physician legitimize the taking of a life and the bringing about of a death? Okay, first of all, I have to correct you. I am a mere Ph.D. in philosophy. I'm not a physician, notwithstanding okay. my presence in Minnesota in the last name of Mayo. But my answer to that statement is that is right out of the 40s and 50s. In, the, in 1981, the President's Commission on Bioethics wrote, without removing the sense of lost finality and mystery that have accompanied death, new developments have made death more a matter of deliberate decision. For almost any life-threatening condition, some intervention can now delay the moment of death. Matters once the province of fate have now become a matter of human choice. So increasingly, people die not because we didn't put them on dialysis or hook them up to a heart pump or do brain surgery on them for a hopeless tumor, but because someone has decided enough is enough. And the person who should decide that, according to federal law, is the patient. And if they can't, then they should have been designated a proxy. What if they don't designate a proxy, though? Then the, then the, the family and the doctors are going to have to do their best. But they don't do their best by treating, you know, and giving every possible treatment. Okay, here's some, a... Now, some people want that. Some people specify in their advanced directive, I want to be kept alive as long as possible. I don't Correct. care how much suffering I'm in. I don't care whether I'm totally incompetent. I don't care whether I can't communicate. I don't care whether I'm comatose. I want to be kept alive as long as you can possibly keep my heart beating. And if that's what they want, that's what they should get. In a Catholic hospital in Duluth, Minnesota, on the lobby appears redemption through suffering. Now, if some Catholic wants to be redeemed through suffering, I'm perfectly all right with that. All right, let me, wh where Oregon. you've gone right now is where I'm going, because this is the Catholic-slash-Christian view of it, and this is from the National Catholic Reporter. Christians must reclaim the ability to embrace suffering. We should combat suffering as best we can, but in the face of some experiences of suffering, we must never lose sight of the need to embrace it. I would guess that you would not agree with that statement. Well, I hope you're a friend of religious liberty. I mean, if Catholics want to embrace that view, then they're absolutely free to do so. But the idea that Catholic doctrine should dictate how non-Catholics should suffer at the end of life strikes me as preposterous. Is that the biggest problem that we have here in moving forward on death with dignity? Is it religion that is really the problem getting in the way? Not necessarily politics, but the fact that uh, the churches this, and religion this, are there as your roadblocks? I think that you don't find the church uh, uh, spending money on ads saying this is against Catholic doctrine whenever there's an initiative. But I think Catholic money finds its way into the voices of others uh, who try to bring up other objections. The main objection is that this is too risky because people with disabilities will start being pressured during their lives and people get the message that they mustn't struggle and we want Grandpa out of the way. But that simply has not happened. That was a risk. I mean, it looked like a risk when this law was passed, but it simply has not materialized. Uh, any, you know, a slippery slope argument is a prediction about what will happen if we do something. Do you consider Brittany Maynard a hero for what she did? I, I, I'm reluctant to throw around the term hero and coward. I understand how people are going to use those terms depending on whether they agree or disagree. Do you find what she did commendable then? I, I think she was brave to do that, yes. I think a lot of people would not have the nerve to do that. About 45 seconds left. Isn't it also the fact that we need to also bring some pause to this because while death with dignity is something that you and many others believe should be an individual choice, it is not something to be taken lightly. I agree absolutely and that's why there are the safeguards that there are in Oregon. Yeah, I talked to someone, what about someone who's very depressed or someone who's 85 years old and lost their spouse and lost their, their hearing and lost their sight and has just had enough can they move to Oregon and do this? And the answer is no, because they're not terminal. There are very strict safeguards, which is why there have been no abuses. 
Dr. David Mayo, we appreciate that. I want to point out again that you are a professor of philosophy at UMD. Also, we apologize for that earlier. You're also a member of the Hemlock Society as well. I take it that people can learn more about the Hemlock Society if they wish to go ahead and check it out. We will stay in touch with you as well. I'm sure this debate is going to go on for quite some time. We thank you for your time and your okay. comments. The Hemlock Society is defunct. Go to DDNC, the Death of Dignity National Center, ddnc.org. DDNC.org. So All right. Thank you very much, Doctor. We appreciate you making that change. Have a good one. All right. Night. You too. Breaking back here on Midpoint, we turn to Alan Dershowitz for reaction to the GOP takeover and how it affects our most important ally in the Middle East. At 34 minutes after the hour, can the government now move away from the my way or the highway stance on immigration? That and more are coming up right here on Midpoint.